All right, guys, so welcome to episode number three of The Road to Supersonic Legend. Of course, in the first two episodes, we talked about settings and then car control. We're going to be jumping into aerial control here for the third episode and really just dive into, one, the basics, and then also move into the nitty-gritty and the top end of, like, how to do proper full aerials and talk about how the pros go for aerials and stuff. And uh, we'll do some pen and ink like we did in the first few episodes and talk about ways you can think about the ball physics and how to contact your car with the ball to get the best shot possible. So we got our nifty little uh, controller overlay here and we're jumping into training. Uh, you know, it can be pretty daunting jumping into the, the field for the first time and you might see somebody fly up in the air and be like, oh, how do they do that? And a big, big thing to start off with aerials is uh, it's hard to uh, it's hard to get used to the fact that when you want to go up, you do not have to press anything once you're in a certain position. Like right here, I'm not touching the analog stick at all. I'm flying just from the fact that my car is positioned in a way that uh, my boost is going to accelerate me upwards. So it's all about controlling uh, the stick to face the way you want. So once you're done facing the way you want, then you don't have to touch the stick anymore. And that's like a huge thing that... I think is a big roadblock for people getting into aerials is that they, they try to go up and they're like, oh, I'm flipping. Oh, no, I'm stuck and I can't continue flying. So all you need to get used to is the timing. Like I would just do this in free play and just get used to trying to land on your butt. Basically, just get used to landing straight up on your bum of your car and just get used to that timing. So once you do that, then you get, all you have to do is press the B button and you'll start flying upwards. And uh, that's really, really huge just to get used to that. Uh, it sounds like, a, like it, does, it doesn't sound like much. But once you get used to that timing, then you can start to do things like uh, pulling up your stick to go at a 45 degree angle. And now you can see now I'm flying up, but also towards the back of the goal. Um, so then the same thing with uh, doing reverse as well. That's more advanced. I wouldn't, I wouldn't focus too much on going flying backwards at the time when you're doing the basics. But as we go through this tutorial or through this little guide on all the aerial basics, uh, you can see that we can start to incorporate a little bit more. So, like I said, I would get used to all the different multi-directions. So you can see, you can actually get, get to a point where flying and holding the boost, you counteract gravity and go forward at the same height as flying. So you can see I'm just staying at a certain level. And I kind of know where that is just from all the time I've played the game. So just like right around here, you can fly straight. You're kind of using gravity and the boost to counteract each other, but also give you forward momentum. And... Uh, that's just like a, something to consider and think about. So when you're going into uh, training modes, which we'll do shortly, uh, that's how you can get to those balls in the air and sort of stay at the height. And and there are things called like feathering boost. Uh, that's really, really important as well, uh, which is just like tapping the boost. So you can see if you just get used to doing the, this angle with the car, then also just doing little taps of the boost, you can see, see you can kind of stay level uh, near the ground or in the air with a little bit of a spurt of boost and even just lift up. And I would just get used to the timing of this too. Just know how much to press the boost button to kind of stay level. And you can kind of see it's like tick, 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 and sort of just like that. I could probably, that was probably really annoying for you, but um, just to get used to those timings. And uh, it really helps with uh, boost control as well, because if you don't have unlimited boost, uh, as you can see right here, let me, let me turn that off. You can hold in the air for quite a while just with holding boost like this but or just tapping boost but if you had 100 percent boost and just held it you fly up really far but you use it all very very quickly and there it is it's all gone so that's that's a big thing in the future once you're working on like ball control and 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 boost management is just to tap the boost for a little bit and then you know hold it like this and you can see how much longer you you stay accelerated in the air here well, let's just jump into the, the training modes right now and, and talk about rookie aerials and then move into the more advanced ones. And what I'll do is show you guys uh, training packs as well. Uh, the number one training pack that I, I personally use all the time to refresh my mechanics and uh, just get used to the, the ball physics and where I need to be with the car. So I know I, I know I brushed over the aerials pretty quickly. I think that you really just need to give it a try and just get used to flying like this. Um, my girlfriend's played for about a week and she's already starting to do these aerial trainings. Um, just from what I've told her about, like, just, you know, practicing holding the car back a little bit. And, she, and to be honest, she's, she's pulling off some pretty nutty shots, but she's doing that thing where I was saying, like, where you just start to spin like this, and she kind of hits the ball. Just get used to sitting uh, behind the ball and jumping at it. The problem that I see with a lot of players early on with these trainings uh, is they go too close to the ball before jumping. Perspective is a huge thing. Like, it seems like I'm pretty 
uh, far from the ball, but I'm really not. If you look from the side, like it's not, we're not that far away from the ball. So you have to get used to the timing of, of your, uh, of your jump, uh, before, before going to, uh, too fast. So like right here, I would suggest jumping before this boost pad, like right here. And that way you can jump up towards the ball. Uh, number one, you probably want to just focus on contacts of the ball, uh, and just kind of fly up to it and hit it. Just get used to touching the ball. Uh, the next thing you want to do is hit it with the front of your car and just kind of tap it, you know, just hit it anywhere um, and just get used to the timing. You know, even if you want to fly from here, you have unlimited boost in these sections. So just do this and, and sort of tap towards it. Um, one thing that people will tell you when you're when you're aerialing is you want to aerial after you've pointed yourself in the direction you want to go. So right here, you want to be facing the ball first. So as you start off with the kickoff of this position here, you don't want to jump right away or jump like this and fly over to it. That's a lot of work. Um, you want to turn your car and adjust it, micromanage it, uh, to face the ball first. And uh, I talked about that a little bit in the car control section in uh, episode two about, you know, how to c control your car a little more on the ground and drift into position. You want to get into a spot where you can kind of, you know, drive around. I'll, I'll do it a little drive around like this. And you want to quickly lock into the position you want to go and then fly towards it like that. Obviously, that's pretty, pretty advanced. But, you know, you want to get used to timing your car turns like this. And then once you get towards the ball, then you can jump. And uh, that's going to be really, really helpful in the lower ranks. Uh, but even in the upper ranks, too. I think a lot of players, like I see, they, they, they're they they're doing very weak aerials because they're jumping like this. And they have to, like, readjust and hit the ball. And look how slow the ball is. But if you can get a very, very efficient line towards the ball first. This one's already lined up for you, which is nice. Number three. Those things will help you. You can see how much easier that one is to shoot just because I'm already facing the direction. I, I really didn't have to press anything but boost and jump and pull the stick back a little bit. Um, these these standalone rookie balls are actually quite weird because they don't have any physics. Like, they just, like, float in the air. Um, if you really want to get into more actual aerials that will happen in-game, I would suggest switching from uh, rookie to pro. I don't know why it's called pro. Honestly, it's very basic. But as we jump into this one, you can see there's some standalone balls, too. And these are a little bit higher, so... When you're jumping into these aerials, you really want to start, you know, maybe just jump up and boost towards the height of the ball and then sort of just level your car out. And you can see with me tapping boost, I'm just going to go towards the ball, just get used to the height of uh, the aerials. I think the thing that like is really daunting for new players is just how scary aerialing looks. <laughs> like when you drive around the car, around the field in, in uh, with in your car and you're, you're, you're moving around like this, like flying in the air just seems like such a difficult thing. It really isn't that difficult. It's just, it's just uh, that roadblock, that mental roadblock you need to get past to get up to the ball and start getting contact with it. Um, as we move into more more advanced things, as you can see, it's sort of escalating as we move through this these basics here. Uh, now we have even a higher ball here. So we're just gonna get used to this and hitting the ball. Like right here, we just hit, tap the ball. Doesn't even matter if we score it right now. We just wanna get used to tapping the ball and hitting it uh, and getting contact. You you kinda wanna get used to the 3D space and, and get used to where the ball is in the air in comparison to where your car is. The field is not as big as you think it is. This looks huge because of the, the the camera settings we were talking about before. Um, but as you shrink the FOV, you can see how small the field can really appear um, when you bring down the FOV. The field is not as big as you think it is. It, it only takes, let's see, I actually don't even know. So probably about six seconds to get across the whole thing. It's not that long because it only took me three seconds to get across that one time. Let me switch my settings back. Um, and go into moving aerials, which will happen quite soon. All right, so here's the first cannon. We have level six, where the ball actually pops out towards you. And this is where we want to combine all those tools and sort of get an idea of the positioning of the ball uh, in the air. You can see if you look from the side, you want to get used to the parabola and see the speed of the ball. I can already tell where it's going to end up on the speed of the ball, right about here at that height, uh, just from the start of the uh, acceleration. Getting used to the gravity of the game and just knowing how far the ball is, because the ball is going to be landing about right, right here, right? So, like, knowing that kind of stuff and knowing the, the trajectory of the ball is really, really helpful and really important. So, you kind of want to interfere with that that path. Um, obviously, I did some twists there. I didn't mean to do that. Sorry. <laughs> but if you want to just, like, go towards uh, the path of the ball, you want to get in the way like this and just get in the way of the touch. Uh, and sort of trace out a, a line here. So, what I'll do is I'm going to grab a pen and ink here and sort of draw the arc and just, get, just help get used to that sort of 3D space and that mental... Spa uh, mental, mental state that you want to be in when you're aerialing because it's very very different compared to ground control. All right, so now that we're in, now that we're actually in Rocket League with the pen and ink tool, I'm gonna draw out the trajectory of the ball. So here it is, it's kind of flying like this, 
And you can see how in 3D space it gets a little bit weird. But uh, with this in mind, I want to pause this here if I can. I cannot pause until I do this. Oh, no. Okay, so we're paused here. I know it's a little bit weird because the, the menu's in the way. But, you know, as the ball is flying up like this, it's important to think about um, where the peak of the ball is, which is at this point, and, and how it's going to start picking up pace as it starts to fall back down to the ground. So... Uh, what's really interesting about the physics of the ball is that, you know, as the ball is standing still, hitting the ball is going to have a certain force. But if the ball is falling down towards the ground, I'm going to grab a different color here. If it's falling down towards the ground and you do that same contact hit here, it's not going to go in the same direction as you hit it if it's as if it's stationary. You're now going to have to add in the two vectors of the force, right? And you're going to end up hitting it here. Um, and that's really, really important to think about is that when the ball is having a different trajectory on its path, if you hit it here and you as the ball is flying up and you hit it and and add like basically add the force to the ball flying upwards it's going to be a lot easier to get lift on the ball if the ball is already moving up so when you when you think about that when the ball is coming back down this way and trying to add upwards force it's going to more level out the ball and i'll show that as an example here as we move into uh this this training pack thing again so i'm going to try and hit it at the apex here into the ceiling and you see how like it just slapped it right into the ceiling. Now we're going to wait until it comes down towards me and starts accelerating. And you can see how much harder it is to get that, that elevation. I hit it sort of in the same spot. I try to get the same spot. I'll do the same thing. Sort of hit it right underneath the middle of the ball. Like that, it hits the roof. Because it's already moving up towards the ceiling. Or it has zero force. Now I'm going to sit underneath it and try to go with the same force. And you can see it It just starts... It feels heavier, right? Because you're, you've got that force of the ball. Um in comparison to when the ball is already lofting. And that sort of goes back to car control in episode 2, where we talk about half volleys. You can see right here, if I hit the ball right before it hits the ground, you're going to see that it dies out like that. It's impossible to get it lifted, because there's so much downwards, for downwards force from the, uh, the ball. But that millisecond difference after it hits the ground, it transfers all that force upwards. And you can see if I hit the ball after it hits the ground, it booms into the ceiling. So that is like... The difference between a few milliseconds of hitting the ball before and afterwards, um, that is a huge difference. And you can do things like this where you drive into the ball and time it and sort of pop it up like that because it's already got so much force upwards that you don't have to add too much to it to get a lot of lift with the ball. So keep that in mind when you're doing aerials as well, uh, that when you hit the ball is very, very important and how how much your ball, your car will affect the ball when it's leveled out like that, then I know that it's going to you know level out in the air if I hit it when it's softer. Um, and that's a big thing of timing hits as well. And as we go into more complex training packs, you'll actually see me adjust my aerials depending on where the ball is in the air and how fast it's coming at me. Because if the ball is coming at you fast, you're going to have to hit it a lot harder just to get it forward. Um, just to counteract that, that force. And this is why this game is so crazy because it's so dynamic in, in the aerials, the aerial game and all the physics. It's very much reactive to how actual physics works i think it's it, it does a very good job of mimicking those hits and stuff so i think that's pretty much it for for pro aerials we're gonna go into uh all-star aerials now which is funny that it's higher than pro aerials but we're gonna move into the next level of aerials here and see just what they give you to practice with so as we're in this new uh new one you can see they move a lot faster so now you're gonna want to get used to just contacting the ball you're gonna see that it, it's gonna cost a lot more speed and a lot more uh precision to get power towards the ball uh on the back of the net uh just because when you go if you go slowly towards it you're not gonna add enough force like this if i just go like this and come up to it i'm not adding enough force at all to get near the, the net obviously i did shoot it towards the net which is good um i kind of want to pause this ball in a spot um, in a spot where I can see it. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do that uh, in here. I can probably go into like a, a replay or something. I'll probably go into replay. So let's go into replay real quick and I'll show you guys just what I what I see when I'm looking at a ball. Now, as we wait for replays to load forever because I have so many of them, um, I hope you guys are enjoying this series so far. I know that it's very, very in depth, but you know, I wanted to have it so it's available for all players and we go to every level possible. So every rank could learn something. I think it's really important to consider every little detail because sometimes it's very easy as even a pro or or somebody who's played the game for a long time to forget those little things uh, that, you know, will really accelerate your gameplay to the next level. I'm just going to find some gameplay here though. Let's see Manfield Knight. I mean, this is 1v1, so I don't think we're going to find too many aerials. <laughs> Let me find a different one. All right, so I found a game with me and Torment. Um, we're going to find some spots where aerials come into play and uh, and just talk about... Um, what to do 
to read the ball and stuff. Obviously, that was like a pretty advanced save, but we'll go into a spot where a simple aerial comes out. All right, so I found a pretty good spot, pretty good example of an aerial. So what I'm trying to do here is try to read the ball uh, where it's going. So I see the trajectory of this ball here as it's flying. It's flying in pretty fast. And uh, I know that it's going to kind of hit the ball, the wall to the side and come back out at the same, same sort of, it's like a mirror, right? You will, it will absorb some of the force, but will come basically out at the same force if it hits at the apex. So because it's, it's sort of hitting a little bit lower than the apex and I expect it to hit here on the sidewall and then slightly down like this. So I'm already reading that ahead of the time before the play is actually happening. And what I want to do is I'm trying to beat this player here in this case. So I would, I just want to hit the ball somewhere to this back corner. So what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the part of the ball that is right around this area. So you kind of want to focus on a contact point and then try to match your car, the front of your car to that point as much as possible. As we talked in the second episode, the most powerful part of your car is the front corners. So if you can aerial up as fast as possible to this ball where it's going to go off the bounce right around here, uh, you want to try and boost towards it and then and then get it to contact in the angle of your car that would be the best case scenario in this situation obviously i uh i get 50 50 which is a term when you go for a hit and both players are hitting it near the same time um but the result wasn't too bad because it goes to my teammate in the back corner um but in this situation since we're focusing on aerials the idea is that i'm watching the contact of the ball before i actually have any contact with the ball so right here i'm already watching like my eyes are already locked on this position like the very front of the ball i know that seems very simple but there are cases where if this for if, if this ball was free and i want to have some pressure towards the goal that's back here in this corner i kind of want to come and hit the ball on the left side right here so it goes towards the back end uh or if i had more free time uh with this ball when there weren't two players here i could let the ball come in here and aerial it and then hit it to the right side of the field where torment is sitting so there's a lot of situations where looking at the different parts of the ball is very, very important. Like I talked about, if you look at this part of the ball, the like the upper and lower hemisphere, any force you hit on this ball is going to send it downwards uh, slightly, or at least affect the force downwards, and anywhere underneath is going to help push it up. So if the ball is already falling and you hit it below, then you're going to level it out. But if it's, if it's already climbing and you hit it, it's going to boom it up even higher. So just some things to think about in the aerial game. Um, I will go into training packs now and talk about one of my favorite training packs that I think could be useful for any range of level. I know that it seems very, very daunting to jump into a very difficult uh, uh, training pack, but I think like even when I started playing the game and I was going into training packs, I was doing some of the hardest stuff at the very, very start because that is the way to learn the fastest. I would sit in training for four hours with a show that I like to watch back when I was in university and I would just sit in this pack here, it's called... I'll, I'll just show it again, just so you see it. Uh, it's called Jailus... Jailus Redirect XXL Pack. This one here, Redirects XXL Pack Hard. I'll put it in the description, but the code is right here. I'll, I'll put that in the top of the description so you guys can grab it for yourself. Uh, all you have to do is just grab this code, and then what you can do is, on the featured... If I don't have the selection bar here, I can go in and enter the code here on the custom training. Custom training will be your best friend with aerials uh, starting off. And as you get better and improve, uh, it'll be a good way to refresh your mechanics. So there's 30 shots in this one. Uh, I have done 30 to 30, but most of the time now with like the new the new update and everything, it, it refreshed, and I just I just sit there and, and refresh shots all the time just to get better. So as you can see right here, you can see the the little bar on the or this little circle thing that comes out of it. It's like a trajectory. You can already see where the ball's gonna kind of go. You gotta you get used to the force of the ball. Um, when you play it a lot so you know exactly where it's gonna fly so you can see i kind of i kind of wrote out that that path already uh before before it even shot so all you're gonna do is try to fly to this and and realize that if you have if you fly if you drive forward and have to adjust it takes a lot of boost and a lot of time to bring yourself into a position where you can hit the ball so the best thing i would say is you want to get ahead of the ball so as it goes across here you want to get ahead of the ball and readjust into the ball here as it's flying across. You never want to be behind the ball and have to adjust with the path of the ball. You want to do the opposite. So as I was saying, as the ball flies like this, you want to get ahead of it first and then adjust your boost as you need to to fly towards it. So less is more here. So flying across here is better and then getting in the way of it afterwards, right? Is better than trying to go like this and then adjusting up like this. It's just way too hard, right? So if you go across like this, and then fly up to it and hit the ball. That's gonna be a lot better for you 
uh, in the future. So just get used to the ball trajectory and, and go ahead of it. Obviously, this is very, very advanced. I would just focus on trying to hit this ball first and just tapping it over and over again. Fly to it as fast as possible and then, and then try to get used to uh, more stuff like where to hit the ball. So I'm going to try and pause this in a spot where I can see the ball. Um, right. Okay. So I did not do that, but I'll, I'll end the ball right now. I'm trying to look at the back end of the ball right here. And a good thing to think about is that you, you basically want to create, uh, your car being a wall for the ball to bounce off of when you're in the air, you can't really affect the ball too much other than being a surface for the ball to bounce off of. So if I'm like sitting, if I, if I draw out the field on a, a black canvas here and, uh, let's just draw a quick rectangle. I think there's shapes here. Yeah. Here we go. So here's the field, here's one of the goals, and here's the other goal. So the ball is flying in at an angle, let's say, this is bird's eye view, so it's going to be a straight line. Um, I'm going to do a bunch of different fancy colors because I feel like it. Uh, the ball is flying out like this, and if it continued, it would fly out like this, way behind the ball. So let's find all the contact points. Like, there's, there's unlimited of them, right? So you could even hit the ball right here and, and be a flat wall. You basically want to, if you wanted the ball to come from here and fly to the middle of the net, you want to find the mirror point of that ball uh, being the car. So this would be the mirror point right here, like that. You want like a, a normal, you want to find the normal of the, the normal is called like the uh, the upwards, basically the, the 90 degree angle from the, the wall. So to make the ball bounce like this back into the net towards the middle, you want to become a flat wall in this direction. I know that seems really, really confusing at the start, but you'll get used to it. And you can see as that as you move along here and the angles change, like where you want to hit the ball, let's say you want to hit it to the right side of the net right here. You can find the normal point of the ball, which is the point in between the reflection between the two parts, and then just become the flat wall for that. So like right here. So you want to be, you want your car to basically, if I want to draw a little crude car <laughs> drawing here, let me see if I can try it. Um, I want my car like let's say the front of my car like this boop 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 and then little wheels you know this uh like that what a beautiful car so that's that's sort of the idea you want your the flat end of your car like this to be at that point of the ball that's the very basic way to think about aerials is to become a wall for that car and there's different ways to hit it obviously you can hit the ball uh with the the bottom of your car to soften the ball a little bit and i haven't really talked about that yet but i'll talk about that briefly um the bottom of the car has different physics than the rest of the car, um, which is really interesting, really interesting to think about. But what ends up happening is I'm going to try to keep the mouse off the screen. There we go. So when you hit the ball with the bottom of your car, it softens it a lot. Um, it's hard to explain just how much you just have to get used to it. You can see how it slows it down a lot, but if you hit it with the front of your car, it booms it a lot harder. So if you ever want to soften a, a shot, which is usually good for accuracy like this, um, it all depends on how much uh, force the ball already has, right? This ball's coming in pretty fast. So me hitting it with my wheels will soften it enough that it's still fast, um, but I'm getting a nice shot. And you can see I'm becoming that, that wall between the ball and the goal to, to bounce it uh, towards where I want it to go. So I can angle my car with air roll, which is a lot more advanced. Once you get used to aerialing and stuff, you can do some more spins like this and sort of get a proper shot. But you want to air roll your car into a spot where you can become that reflection, basically. It's, it's a nice way to think about it. It's definitely something that even higher level players might not think about. So I hope that is a nice little tip that will help you uh, become better at aerial aerialing. But there's so many things in this pack that can help you just get used to uh, the positioning of your car and, and, and getting used to the power of the car and how much you can affect the, the movement of the, of the ball on the shots. Um, and there's some really good ones like this where you can really get some good angles. You can see this one's already going on target pretty much. So it's barely, barely any effect needed on the ball here to, uh, to put it on target, but it's nice to be able to redirect it. And I, I like to practice shots like this. This is way advanced here, by the way, but I like to sh practice shots like this, where I go behind the shot to flick it behind me. And this is like, this, this is why I like this pack so much is that it, it really is good for all levels, uh, because it's just so much, uh, available to you. You can use the shot over and over and over again and just get used to different shots. You can do different things. You can pre-jump it or sit on the ground longer, you know, do different backflips. Uh, I think shot number 13 is one of my favorite. Yeah, this one here. So I like to do different things where I would, you know, pre-jump it and then sort of time it. And this is like good for just getting used to how your flip works like that. So shooting at far left post. I really like those kind of shots. Um, and getting used to how your car manipulates in the in the air. Obviously, this is very, very, very advanced, and it's not even about aerials, but just getting used to 
redirecting the ball in a certain fancy way. And that's like, this is why this pack is so versatile because it's really available to any player to get used to aerials and crazy stuff. Um, and just trying to get, get it, like get basically uncomfortable. The more uncomfortable you can be, the better. Uh, the way that you improve this in this game faster than anybody else is to, to go above and beyond and learn how to do things that are way harder than what you're supposed to be doing. Because once you once you do shots like this, um, if a ball, let's go into training real quick, and a, and a ball just lofts in front of the net really softly, uh, you're going to be like, oh, that's easy peasy because I've been practicing this impossible shot uh, in in free play. Like, oh, I can I can hit this. Okay, I, I can't hit this because I got no, no boost. But... Um, let me let me put this ball in a situation where it's like really easy to shoot. Okay, like this. Like this ball is like a lot a lot easier than the other ones that we were shooting before. Because it's just in front of the net, you just do a little mini jump, and you just have to time it between uh between your jumps and your boosting. Um, that's all just gonna come from you practicing it. There's no one in the world that can tell you how to time your boost because you really just need the muscle memory and the timing of it to get used to it. I'm sorry if that doesn't uh you know appeal to you but that's just how this game is um i hear a lot of comments on my twitch channel which which by the way if you want to watch stuff live like my custom apps or whatever else um i get a lot of questions like how do i improve fast from gold or platinum or diamond it's just time it really is just time and a lot of the pros that play this game they really just sat down and played this game for hours and hours and hours and did the same thing over and over again uh to the point where they don't have to anymore because it becomes second nature I would say the last two most important things about aerials at the high level of gameplay in Rocket League is fast aerials and hitting the ball in a strong way. And we did talk about that a little bit with the way of hitting the ball as if it's a wall and stuff. But fast aerials to start off is basically just getting up to the air, up to the air basically as fast as possible. So of course you want to be able to jump up at the air and beat the opponent. And uh, what pros do and what higher level players do is they boost and jump at the same time and get a double pop while they're moving backwards in the air with pulling the car up in the air. This is what we were talking about before about uh, the dodge dead zone, as you can see here. This is why this number here is important to have at least 0 0.85 or 0 0.9, somewhere around there is good, um, just to have it high up. So that way you can pull your, your stick back and pop up in the air while boosting. If you have it too low, you'll do backflips like this while you're trying to aerial. So it's important to have a number where you can kind of do a quick, you can see how it might, in the bottom left corner here, I'm doing like quick switches like this. So when I double pop, I do a stop and then I keep going. Um, and the way I do A and B together with my boost, it depends on your, your setup with your controls, obviously. Um, I basically just fat finger A and B like this. Um, so I be, I'm able to hold boost the whole time while jumping. And uh, of course, while you're moving faster, it's going to be harder to get air, uh, speed in the air. Um, you're going to be moving more forward. You have to fight that momentum. Uh, if you're, if you're uh, at a standstill, you go up a lot faster. Um, you don't want to be obviously standing completely still, but just to know that instead of flying like this and trying to get up, you can see how much harder it is than, you know, hitting the brake for a little bit and then popping right up into the air. Um, just something to think about. Um, and then as far as hitting the air, the ball like strong in the air, it's all about getting that, that curve into the ball at the last second. So if I can get a ball flying here, um, when people go for aerials, they'll do air rolls like this to try and get the ball to flick off the car. So you kind of want to follow the car's momentum into the ball, which is the same reason why people air roll into shots and stuff too. Um, we'll get more into shots and dribbling in the next episode, in episode 4. But it's just important to think about how to uh, hit the ball really strong. You want to lead into the shot um, like that. like Sort of like air roll into it and then flick into the side. Um, a lot of stuff to think about. Uh, we'll get into more detail in, in the uh, episode number 4 and uh, and then move into some ranked gameplay and, and start to really climb up the ranks. But um, that's just some two major things that I wanted to talk about in the end of this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this third episode of the in-depth tutorial series and we're going to be jumping into ranked quite soon. One more episode on dribbling and then we're going to be jumping into the bronze level and start to move up the ranks and, and sort of apply what we've been talking about in these early earlier episodes. Um, if you didn't watch the first two episodes, I would highly suggest it uh, just so you've got everything covered. So if I reference it in the next episode or so, um, it's nice to have it uh, in the back of your mind. But until next time, guys, hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I'll catch you guys in the next one.